Good morning and welcome to Arizona Speaks, leveraging AI to build and grow your small business. I'm Yolanda France, Manager of Midsize Business Management at SRP, and I'm super excited that I get to help kick off this virtual event on this truly fascinating topic. But before we dive into the discussion, let me tell you a little bit about SRP. For 120 years, SRP has provided water and power to help our region grow and prosper. We work to keep the lights on and the economy humming to ensure that Arizona remains an incredible place to live and to run a business. Together, SRP and ASVA are committed to empowering business owners through the many resources our organizations offer, through relevant and impactful education, and by providing consistent support. Now, in today's rapidly evolving business landscape, embracing cutting edge technologies and innovative strategies can help small businesses succeed and grow. And one technology that's currently making waves in the entrepreneurial world is artificial intelligence or AI, which is a simple term for a broad and diverse array of applications. Today, we'll explore how AI can be harnessed to empower your small business and help optimize operations. We will hear from experts and thought leaders in the field of AI and entrepreneurship, and our panel will delve into the practical applications of AI, the challenges and opportunity it presents, and the ways it can be leveraged to help take your businesses to new heights. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to today's moderator, founder and CEO of Lucera Consulting Group, Manny Lucera. Manny has a proven guiding businesses towards success, and I have no doubt he'll skillfully lead our discussions today. Manny is a Phoenix native and a proud graduate of Arizona State University. Oh, that was he holds his bachelor's degree in English literature and a master's degree in business management from the W.P. Carey School of Business. In addition, Manny teaches a wide variety of courses on topics, including starting a business nonprofit, marketing, and much more. His passion is helping individuals and organizations from all backgrounds build sustainability and impact in their communities. Now, to say that Manny is an expert in all things small business will that would be just an understatement. So Manny, welcome and take it away. Yolanda, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I am so happy and excited to be your moderator for this wonderful conversation today around a really important topic of AI. We have a great program today. We'll be discussing things like what is AI, right? Let's understand really what the platforms can do and how they can help us. Uh, we'll talk about tools and strategies for leveraging AI for our small businesses. Uh, how will it enhance the client or customer experience for you? And I'm personally excited to talk about AI for marketing and accounting benefits, right? So many things that we can do. Uh, we'll have an open dialogue today with our incredible panel. But before we get to that, I want to take a minute to thank our incredible program sponsors for making this event possible. So please give a round of applause to our wonderful sponsors, which are Mentor Cloud, Southwest Airlines, Salt River Project, CyberCatch, Lucera Consulting Group, and Sherm of Greater Phoenix. Thank you to our sponsors for making this event possible. Now, I have the wonderful distinction of getting to introduce our panel for today's conversation. So please join me in welcoming our panel. First is Dave Charest, who is the Director of Small Business Success at Constant Contact, the online marketing leader trusted by millions of small businesses across the country. In his role, Dave acts as an educator and an advocate for small business leaders, marketing professionals, and nonprofits by providing practical marketing advice to help them achieve their goals. Dave is a dynamic leader, speaker, creator, and award-winning marketer who strives to inspire small businesses by simplifying the complex world of online marketing. Dave also hosts the Be A Marketer podcast. Next is Habib Matar, who is the lead faculty at Chandler Gilbert Community College. Habib is a pioneer in vocational education on artificial intelligence, and he is passionate about making the subject accessible to all. With a computer science background from ASU, again, go Devils, and industry experience at Intel and Northrop Rubin, Mr. Matar provides a first step into learning about his cutting edge technology. He's recognized for developing innovative AI courses for early college students, bridging the gap between theory and practice, and inspiring individuals to pursue AI careers. In this session, Mr. Matar will share his unique insights into AI's transformative potential 
and how it can shape not only your career, but also the future of technology and society. And lastly, we have Ram Ramamurthy, who leads the AI efforts of Zoho Corporation. He has been instrumental in setting up Zoho's AI platform from scratch. He comes with a rich 11 plus years of experience in building AI for the enterprises at Zoho Corp, and the AI platform currently serves over 5 billion requests a month and is growing strong. He is a passionate leader with a level-headed approach to emerging technologies and is a sought-after speaker at technology conferences. So Ram, thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> and thank you to our entire panel today. We're excited for a wonderful dialogue. We'll have open dialogue. I'll have some questions for each of you. Uh, so let's go ahead and kick it off with the very first question. Uh, and really, right from each of you, what is AI to you in a few sentences? How would you explain AI to our attendees? Let's go ahead and start with Dave. Oh, okay. So right out of the gate, uh, how would I explain AI? So I think um, from someone who's a non-technical uh, person, right? I think AI is really just, it's a, it's a, a set of uh, programs that really helps simulate human learning patterns in many ways, right? And so it allows you to, uh, do things much faster uh, than the human mind would typically be able to do. And so I, I think of it as a, an opportunity to uh, be an assistant, something that can help you kind of brainstorm and something that can actually these days, um, which is really getting a lot of play these days, is really help on the content side of things as well. Um, and so uh, I'm sure our other colleagues here will, will be able to answer this a little bit more technically, but from my perspective, it's, it's something that allows you to do things that, um, in many instances, much faster and just wasn't humanly possible before. Wonderful. Great way to kick us off. Uh, Habib, what are your thoughts on what is AI? I have a like 30 minute lecture just going over the <laughs> one topic of what is AI, but uh, if I were to summarize it, AI is an adaptive system that can be used regardless of uh, the con context or environment of which it's being used. It's adaptable to that environment or context of which it is used. And uh, continuing on from there, I see AI now with things like ChatGPT, it's bridging the gap with how we interface with technology. So now it's not as difficult to do tasks that were much more difficult to do before because the language we're using between computers and ourselves is much more accessible. We don't have to write programming languages per se. We can use written text with ChatGPT, for example. So that's how I see AI. It's a, a bridge between us and technology and as well as it's adaptive in its own way. That, that's great and, and that's a perfect segue now to RAM. Uh, right, utilizing these platforms in your company. Tell us more about how uh, you've leveraged AI for your company. Sure. So uh, we build a lot of tools for businesses. And uh, um, the thing about AI is it's not artificial and it's not intelligence. So it's, it's more like using your past data to uh, build insights for the present and maybe to some extent forecast the future. So uh, when we build tools for businesses, uh, it includes everything from the HR department to the marketing department to the customer support department. And then you have a ton of data collected in all of these setups. And we use AI in every point to decide the next best action at any given point. For example, you have a job description coming up and then you have a bunch of resumes. We use AI to prioritize few resumes that could go well. You have a bunch of leads coming in your sales processes and depending on your past behavior, trying to predict leads that have a good chance of conversion, trying to predict leads that might not convert and so that your sales guy can go the extra mile. So anything and everything that we do in all our tools, uh, we use AI to decide the next best action based on the past data that has been collected in the system. And in fact, I have uh, said this before, uh, it's not just about AI, it's about how well AI integrates with your existing business processes, existing business tools, because again, uh, there are people in the process, their things have to be documented and whatever decision is going to be automated by AI is going to be acted upon by a team or teams of people. So just summarizing, uh, you have ton of past data, uh, 
uh, AI is something that can help you uh, do something in the present and think about the future by using the things that you have learned from the past data. Wonderful, thank you. And, and to that point, Dave, I'm curious for you, uh, I, I'm a big fan of your product. I use it very often. Tell us about how you all have used AI and integrated into those platforms for small businesses across the country. Yeah, so a, a few ways that we think about it. So, so one is uh, on the side of kind of some of the things that we're doing. So we have a, uh, something that work, is working behind the scenes. So when you send email, uh, one of the things that you want to make sure that happens, of course, is that that email gets delivered to the inbox. And so in doing that, we've actually, we've created a product called the Spaminator, and that kind of happens and goes on behind the scene, right? And what that allows us to do is highlight or um, and, and see any potential bad actors that might be trying to use the platform. And so we can stop that from happening before it happens. That way, um, you know, we can maintain our 97% deliverability rate. So that's one way that we're kind of using AI to help us behind the scenes to better serve our customers. Now for our customers, what we're trying to do now is really think of um, to, 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 to Ram's point, right? In terms of just using data, I think this is really future looking uh, and particularly in the e-commerce space uh, where you can really because you have so much more data available just in terms of how people are purchasing behaviors, how people are visiting things on websites, what people are responding to in terms of engagement, where people are in a particular journey with you. These are all really exciting things where you can start to make predictions as to what are the next best messages for people uh, to receive so that you really start to process that data in a way that you couldn't before and really get to this place where you start treating customers as individuals versus groups of people. And when you can do that, you can really kind of live into that promise of right that what we always talk about marketing, it's about, about delivering the right message to the right person at the right time. And you can really start to treat people as those individuals. Um, the other area that we're really focused on, of course, is just helping our core, our core audience, I would say, are business owners first marketers by necessity. And so there's an element of how can we help you make that marketing process easier because there is a time constraint involved here, right? And so uh, we are using some things on the content side uh, that allow you to, rather than have to prompt uh, what it is that you want to create, it's really about giving it some keywords and saying, this is the type of announcement that I want, and then giving you some options that allow you to either use that as is or change it or make some changes, but it actually save you time staring at a blank screen, right? That type of thing. And I think as we move forward, it's really about how can we help the small business start to think about um, almost like a coach or an assistant. What are the next things that they should be thinking about? Oh, you sent this email. Well, you know, we've seen some businesses that do this actually get some better results. So that might be, you know, creating an ad or creating a social post. And so really kind of helping them think about like, what are the next things that they can do to get even better results? And that's how we're thinking about it at Constant Contact. I love that. You know, it's interesting. I, I see hundreds of businesses a year and I always tell people, most businesses don't start because they want to do marketing or they want yeah. to do accounting, right? Just like you said, it's a necessity. You have to do those things as a business owner. Um, so I, I love this idea of AI helping bridge the gap for those of us who are not marketing experts. Um, so I'm curious, Habib, on your end then, how would you explain to a small business owner how AI can boost efficiency or productivity? What, what tools can they use? How does it make your daily life easier as a business owner? What I find so interesting is from this panel, you have such a wider range of uh, expertise. You have people who are doing it uh, as a service within their job. My focus is more so workforce development. So I'm developing students who go through a two-year degree who then will then become employees for these small businesses bringing in their skills of AI. Or I provide a platform where employees that are already uh, in the workforce can come and take a certificate at my institution, gain those skills, and then bring it back to their institution. There's such a wide range of application where AI can be, uh, can be used. So you talked about data analytics, taking previous data and then performing prediction from previous data. Uh, you think about 
analyzing customer sentiment, whether a review is positive, negative, or neutral. Um, you can talk about utilizing computer vision where you have, um, let's say, a wafer, because uh, there's a lot of semiconductor manufacturing done here. You have a wafer and there's a little cut in the wafer. How can you detect where that cut is uh, and show and improve the automation of your system uh, by showing where that cut is? So there's a wide range of application in AI. And what we see right now is, is there's a lot of no-code tools that are available for people to start bringing it to their own business. So part of my work is, is I teach students how they can go and find those no-code tools, create their own tools by programming, and then bring those skills to something like as a small business. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that um, there's a lot of application out there. If I was a small business listening to this right now, I would be thinking about just trying to get a general scope of what it, the technologies are available. I would look at things like Google Cloud API. Uh, I would look at Microsoft, or Microsoft Azure. I would look at um, AWS and what they provide in terms of AI and ML platform services. And then I would look at the top 100 companies in AI. And I would say, what services do they provide and then see if that can apply to my small business. Love that, thank you. Now, you were touching on some of these points already, but uh, I'd like to dive a little deeper. I, I'm definitely a data-driven guy, right? I look at data, I, I wanna make decisions based off of that. And I'm gonna go on a crazy limb here, and I'm gonna assume that Ram also likes data. I'm just guessing here. <laughs> so Ram, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, as a business, what decisions can I make from the data? How will AI make or help me make decisions as a business owner? Perfect. So um, we have technically moved from process automation to decision automation. Uh, for example, today with AI, um, as soon as a customer support ticket lands and you are able to uh, understand what the ticket talks about, assign it to the right agent, depending on their workload. Uh, and then probably when it shows up on the agent screen, you're also able to look at your knowledge base, look at problems that you've solved previously, and then also give a recommendation on what should be done to solve this particular issue, right? In the process, the customer is also kept informed on the status and the expected time to solve similar tickets. So you see, we're not doing much uh, different from a non-AI thing. It's 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 always about answering the support ticket to the uh, best satisfaction of the customer. At the same time, uh, ensuring your support agent's productivity is also really good. So AI can come in and help your support agent perform really better. Uh, replace the redundancy where, uh, you know, today an agent has to read a ticket, understand what it talks about, then look at the support agent's queue and then assign it to the right person. Now, all of that is automated. Uh, and then you also have a chatbot that could answer the questions of your customer directly. So this way, we are looking at optimization at scale. We're not, we're not going to replace anybody, but then uh, the whole process becomes much simpler. Your mean time to respond actually comes down. So these little decisions that happen across the system i mean what is this ticket talking about whom do i assign it to uh, and uh, what could be the possible solution of this all of this add up and then uh, it helps in customer retention it helps in employee retention and of course it helps in optimizing your whole stack so that uh, every player in the group is happy so like these very very small touch points in fact uh, uh, before this whole LLM thing blew up, the the most used AI use case in Zoho suite of apps, we have like features in all of the products, but you wouldn't believe the most used feature was recommending an icon for the forms which people created on our low code platform. I mean, we didn't even call it AI. It, it uses a word to vector like thing where you name a form and then there are a bunch of icons. We recommend icons. So you see, uh, you know when people talk about ai they talk about decision automation they talk about cancer cures they talk about self-driving cars but 
these smaller touch points in your everyday processes i think that will mean a lot to small business owners and that is what ai is offering right now if Absolutely. i can and, jump in here a little bit oh, yeah. it's, it's all right yeah to go on from your point what we see is is most of the ai use case uh, is being hired by let's say google amazon microsoft is to do things like ad revenue and search engine platforms right but in reality, there's a ton of space for AI application in small businesses that are unique to your company and unique to the problems that you deal with. The thing is, is that that's not where the focus of research or the focus of um, hiring is right now. It's very much in that space of ad revenue and search engines. So there's this group of people who have AI skills and who have AI ability that want to tackle problems like that. They just don't know where to go right now. And as a small business coming and saying, hey, we want people with these skills. We want that, um, we have job recs that show that we just want someone to help us get the process started will help immensely in the Arizona community in general. Because um, again, I see most of the job recs going towards that ad revenue and search engine these small businesses take a chance, make a job rec for someone to come in and teach your company about what AI can do or hire on a consultant or company to help you do that. Very well said. Yeah, you know, this goes back to the point of productivity and efficiency. Um, I'll give a quick, quick example, right? I was dealing with a client just a couple of days ago who's trying to figure out how to create proposals and what would have taken them probably hours, something they've never created before, AI can help you do those things. And it's not just about doing ads, which is a perfect segue to the next question I have for Dave. Um, and, and we've been talking mostly about the good side of AI, uh, but let's get a little more in the trenches now. Can AI sound like my brand, right? If I'm doing marketing, social media, newsletters, Will it reflect the branding that I'm hoping is is part of the company? Yeah, so uh, in, and I'm sure our panelists here can speak a little bit more to this too, but I, I think the idea is that that yes, eventually it can, right? Like I, but you have to train it on on what is the voice of your brand? Like how do you want to sound? And I think, you know, I've even personally played around with this and try to do this, and I haven't, you know, cracked the code yet, right? But you get, I think what is at least where we are right now is you get to a place where you're closer than you were before, right? It's almost like I've, I've heard it described as almost like draft zero, right? In many instances where instead of staring at a blank screen, you can say, hey, I'm trying to do this. I need this type of thing. You've given it some ways that you talk and some it, it learns kind of like your profile and then it gives you something. And then I think where we are now is you still need the human element, right? Like you still need that component of where you're going in. And I think this is maybe the big warning is that like, don't just take what it gives you and go, <laughs> right? Like review that and make sure things are accurate, make, make sure things are correct. And that it is conveying things the way you wanna say. Um, and it's just giving you a leg up in, in terms of, again, this time where, you know, to your proposal situation, right? Where you're, not spending an hour staring at something, figuring out, okay, where do I even begin? You've actually got something that you're like, oh, okay. And then it starts to open up areas in your mind where you're like, oh, okay, I can go here, or this is how I would describe that, right? And so I often find myself being a better editor than I am a writer many times, right? And so it's almost like, oh yeah, give me something. And then I can turn that into something that I really want to use. And I think that's really where we are, is that it's not a there are so many little places, as we've been mentioning here, that it can help you and move you forward. But from from the creation standpoint, I think it's really about understanding it's a it's a how do you make progress versus having something that's perfect out of the gate. I'm sure we'll get there, um, but I, I would I would argue that maybe we're not there 100 percent yet. And I'm I'm happy to be proven wrong on that, but that's just my sense of having used it and played around with things. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, and, and this leads to, to a kind of deeper conversation, right? Of, uh, there's a lot of conversation around how it's going to replace jobs, take jobs away. Um, so I'm particularly interested in Habib's comments here around, you know, 
what happens to those businesses saying, I'm an attorney and people won't hire me anymore. I'm a doctor and they're gonna use ChatGPT for their, for their medical needs, right? Uh, how, how do we combat that for a small business to reassure them that it is a tool and not meant to replace you? I really hope that doctors and lawyers are not replaced by a large language <laughs> model. I don't think that's a good idea at all. Um, so, <laughs> what, when you get into the weeds of building a machine learning or AI system, you realize there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make these systems uh, and to make sure that they validate uh, well. Um, I mean, in the comments here, we say it says what best practices are available for dealing with hallucinations. Um, so these systems are not perfect and there has to be a human evaluator in the middle. If I was sitting here as a small business listening in, I am thinking about how I can make my business work. You know, I, I am thinking about what is the most efficient method that I can get the advertising, marketing and things like that out there. If you think about like marketing and ads right now, it's all about content generation for the most part. You have to have quality content content generation, but people on Instagram are posting, you know, two or three times a day just to get some kind of traction with their audience. And so if you can help automate that process or improve that process with the machine learning system, um, of course, having, you know, someone come in and read the prompt that's generated. I mean, if I was a small business, it wouldn't be a second thought to hire someone to go and do that. And that person that's hired to do make those prompts or generate that content, they're going to be doing other things on the side as well to help grow this small business. Uh, all I see in terms of, uh, I think jobs will change 100%. I think there will be loss of jobs. But I see that we're going to be able to do a lot more than we were able to do before. We're going to be able to generate more content. We're going to be able to have more skills maybe in specifically AI or improvements of what you were already doing before, but now propelled by AI. Um, so you're just gonna be able to do more, solve more complex problems and uh, provide more service to your company with these AI skills, rather than worry too much about your quote unquote job being completely taken away. If you, if, I will say, if you stay in the space of, I'm not going to learn more, I'm not going to improve my own skills, you may find yourself in that position. But that's why there are programs like what I teach at the community college, a very cheap option for you to go and learn about how you can uh, learn about these systems. There's a website called Coursera.com, which has, uh, and deeplearning.ai, which has a ton of courses for people with no prerequisite to go and learn about how they can uh, make use of these skills as well. Very, very well said and very reassuring, I hope, to all of my fellow small business owners. Um, and so let's let's say with that into a question for Ram, right? What what safety measures should I take if I'm a small business wanting to leverage AI? Uh, how do I prepare to start using that? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, first, every, everything is not rosy about AI because uh, um, the way AI works, uh, especially the larger language models, um, you know, I would I would put my pessimistic hat on and and say if you look at the history of AI, it has gone through a lot of uh, you know AI summers and AI winters. So yeah, it it is a sinusoidal thing. And today we are at the peak of AI summer, uh, thanks to uh, the infinite computing power we have in the form of cloud thanks to business models around data right we don't pay for our search engines we don't pay for our social networks instead we give back a lot of our personal data and you know we uh, the company is a trillion dollar business model and uh, the idea is the data that we give will help us at some point that that's been the whole premise but when it comes to businesses this is a very different ball game and <coughs> Today, they say we have exhausted all our data sources and, and any AI practitioner would tell you AI does not really like synthetic data, right? And, and, and think about it, all the digital data that we have generated ever since the human race started going digital has now been used up. And then 
uh, we train large language models and uh, today a lot of content is being posted uh, is generated by a large language model i mean just open up your linkedin feed and you will find so many people embarking on a journey right i i've never seen the word embarking being used so much <laughs> somehow it's a uh, consumer uh, llm's very favorite word to do and everybody is embarking on a new journey right so think about it you have exhausted all the digital data that you have had and now using that you are generating decent quality uh, training data and then that goes into the newer model the output becomes even more uh, you know lesser quality and then that lesser quality keeps going into the training data and and this could be the onset of an ai winter itself so as a company when you are adopting to a technology like this uh, remember i told you about x plus ai uh, this is just a tool that can help you right just don't uh, give up to the hype because uh, i mean it it's been hyped up like crazy uh, it's just another tool in your kitty that can help you optimize your thing and ultimately your customers won't bother if you are using ai uh, or using if else or hiring a bunch of humans to uh, let the task done so focus on your core competencies in fact uh, companies that have existed over decades didn't chase one particular uh, you know one particular fashion uh, technology trend that happened during that time oh, oh you have to embrace tech of course companies uh, without mobile apps or companies without internet presence don't exist today so you have to slowly embrace it but keep your expectations real because this ai can also hallucinate so uh, one recent very small example uh, my daughter uh, 6 year old is a very big fan of using uh, chat gpt to ask everything that she has and then she wanted to make a birthday cake for her mom and apparently the large language model asked her to put onions into the birthday cake now i had the wisdom to say onions don't go in a birthday cake but you cannot take that liberty in your business process so use ai as an assistant uh, use ai uh, as uh, something that augments what you do and uh, just don't go behind the mad hype that is being written outside yes it's a, it's a good piece of tech uh, but keep investing in other areas as well yeah i love it it's not a total replacement right which goes back to Habib's comment earlier, it's not going to completely replace everything for a small business. Um, to that point, though, Dave, you may have a little bias here, <laughs> but what would you say are, are kind of the best AI tools for marketing, especially someone who, you know, hosts a podcast and, and podcasts involve writing and, and you know, the producing and the writing and all those different things. Uh, what tools would be beneficial to me as a small business if I'm getting into marketing? Yeah, so I think there are a couple of things because I think because everyone seems to be at this point adopting some type of AI within their tools, right? And so I think the first thing that you should do is rather than look for like the silver bullet, it's really about what are the tools that you already use and what are they providing you that you might be able to play around with to use, right? So for example, again, Constant Contact uses the content generator, right? And so that's already in line with something that you're already doing. So use that and, and 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 see how that helps you move forward with something i think from there i think many of the of the platforms are kind of built on chat gpt i was talking to someone recently who was like tried all of these different kind of content related um tools and they're all kind of built on chat gpt and what she found was that actually it's just easier just to go to chat gpt right because then you can get <laughs> the things that you need and ask it the questions and kind of do more than what you can with the individual tool. So it, I actually think it's a combination of using what is in line with tools you already use and then going kind of to the source, whatever that may be, because I think there are other things out there, but then using that to see how it can help you. So for example, you mentioned the podcast piece, right? Like my wife and I do a podcast. I obviously do one for constant contact. Like I will often go to it to say like, hey, what are some ideas of things that we could talk about on our podcast? Or I'm talking to this person about this topic. What are some questions that I can ask, right? And so it's really about, again, that collaborator and assistant that, that helps you do that. And I think, I do think on some levels, like ChatGPT, for example, creates another problem, which is now you need to become 
a prompt engineer. And so in addition to all the hats you're already wearing for your business, now you've got to figure out how to use this thing. And I think, I think to everyone's point here is that like, yes, you should embrace and figure out how to make this part of your processes. But that's where I also look for, well, what are the tools that help make that easier for you versus, because I often find myself staring at the thing going like, all right, I've got another blank page problem. Like, all right, how do I get this to give me what I need, right? And so it, it, it kind of, it goes in a cyclical fashion like that so in many ways. And so it's really about uh, addressing the things that are in tools that you already have and then getting your feet wet with, with some things that you just, I think, I think it's just, we're all learning right now in this. And so play around and see how it can start to help you and you can start to make that kind of part of your daily routine almost. Wonderful. And, and this is a great as we as we wrap up this initial section leading into the Q&A. Um, I'm curious from each of you, and we'll start with Habib here. Uh, what does the future look like? So three years, 10 years from now, right? How will AI continue to impact small businesses? What future trends are you all seeing? Um, let's go ahead and start with Habib. Yeah, I, I really see I think open AI has really been the forefront of this. But there's going to be more tools that are released that make it much easier for you to utilize AI. We're in that emerging space right now, the AI summer, as uh, depicted before. Uh, we're in this emerging space of so people are now finding, oh, I can actually do things with AI and create products. And um, I can give those to customers and they'll buy it, right? Uh, three years ago when I started this program, before ChatGPT had even came out, I was like, I don't see why there's not like security cameras utilizing computer vision uh, within small mom and pop shops. Why wouldn't they have some access to that kind of technology? And then the ring doorbell came out and I was like, that's exactly what I thought that would look like uh, in the future. And so you're going to start seeing more things like that because this technology is more accessible. There's a lot of hype behind it. So you're going to start seeing, oh, I can use this chat GPT uh, or GPT-4, GPT. They just came out with them seven days ago. I can use this like easy tool to, to perform some job function for me. Um, or I run a restaurant and I'm going to have a camera set up to detect how much ingredient there is left and order more ingredient when we run out. Those kind of job functions are going to be propelled by AI in the future. And I'm really excited because now we're going to have more intelligent human work be more valued rather than this very monotonous everyday work that we do now. Wonderful. Ram, let's get your take on it. Yeah, sure. Um, I think uh, I hope you can hear me. It looks like there is some disturbance on, the, on my internet. Yeah, okay. So uh, I think uh, AI will get more and more commoditized. Uh, today, a lot of our small business customers, uh, they see that the entry barrier to AI is very high, right? And, and typically enterprise has the late mover advantage because we have seen a lot of AI in the consumer domain, um, your search engine, social networks. And, and now here is a small business that just has thousands of rows or maybe hundreds of rows. And then they need some kind of prediction or some kind of insights from it. And the margin for low here i mean i cannot say a customer who might possibly uh, a lead who might possibly become my customer and i cannot say this person won't convert and then the sales team stops the follow-up so your precision levels are important and the amount of data that you have is very limited and the cost so even uh with chat gpt uh, it's very expensive to just use chat gpt it's like giving a company credit card to all of your employees and having letting it unmonitored right so over the next five years i am sure this entry barrier will come down uh, especially areas like foundational models are coming up where you take a large language model that can understand english and then customize it to your domain right you don't want your your enterprise software to answer uh, a vacation plan in Hawaii, right? It, it's all about the ground truth and the data that is within your system uh, that is captured in all of your business processes. So we will be seeing more and more enterprise AI and the entry barrier 
will come down both in terms of cost and in terms of the data that is needed for better precision. Uh, so it, it, it all looks very optimistic for AI. Uh, what can small businesses do today? Uh, just find a good software provider, uh, you know, who can play the long game, uh, who does not chase trends and who keeps investing uh, as the technology evolves because today it's AI, tomorrow it could be very different. I mean, we saw that with blockchain, right? All of a sudden, everything was about Web 3.0, decentralization, uh, but somehow it didn't make a big impact in the enterprise. So do what you do uh, correctly and then augment that with AI would be the uh, right way to go ahead. And the next five years, like I said, the entry barrier will come down. More and more enterprise software will have AI capabilities that are built in. It will no longer be a differentiator, but more like a basic commodity. Wonderful. Thank you. Now, as, as we head into the Q&A session, I, I do want to give Dave the chance to tell us about his you know, view of the future with AI. Um, so for everyone here, feel free to start writing in your questions and let's go ahead and pass it to Dave for his insight. Sure. Thanks, Mandy. Uh, so I think, you know, everything's moving really fast right now. And there's, you know, uh, to Habib's point, you know, just a few days ago, right, uh, uh, you know, ChatGPT has changed and is now allowing people to do new things. And so I think this is going to evolve really quickly. And I think it's really about now, you know, I've, I've had somebody say, and not to be kind of doom and gloom about it, but there are going to be businesses that embrace AI and move forward. And then there are going to be the other businesses that don't exist anymore. Right. And I think that's really where we need to think of it. And it, it and whether or not, you know, it's AI that's helping you with these things, I think is another thing that it, it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's giving you the ability to one save time. Um, I think at many levels communicate more effectively um, and then just process data in ways that help you make better decisions that you, you couldn't before. And if you embrace it and come at it from that perspective, as this is something that is a, uh, uh, a multiplier of the amazing things that you already do. I think that's a good, way, a healthy way to look at it and embrace it in a way that will help move you forward. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, panel. Let's get into some Q and A. So I have quite a few questions uh, coming through the chat. So the first one that I would like to talk about here, uh, let's go back to a comment uh, that I believe Brandon mentioned earlier which was, uh, what are best practices for dealing with hallucinations? And for our audience, uh, hallucinations for AI are best defined as those responses generated by AI that contain false or misleading information presented as fact, right? So something that seems too good to be true uh, or is presented as true when really it's not right information. Um, so how can we deal with those hallucinations? I'll, I'll leave it up to whoever on the panel would like to respond. I, I've thought about that question a little bit. Um, I, I do want to set the stage here. I see a lot of questions on prompt engineering and large language models. There's a ton of AI application outside of the space. Right now, ChatGPT is very popular and accessible, but I want you as a small business to take the charge of exploring outside of that space as well because there's a ton of AI application outside of that space. Again, I talked about Coursera a little bit as a, as a resource for that, looking at the top 100 companies and what they provide. The data analytics that we have been talking about is not necessarily generative AI. So I wanna, I wanna set that stage first. So hallucinations. Um, so large language models, ChatGPT, they, they're the same thing. I hope that's been clear. Um, they have something called few shot or one shot prompting. What that means is, is if you type a prompt that you want, it, it will try to give its best answer immediately. And what's actually going on behind these systems is, is it's just predicting the next uh, token, which would be a character in this case, and how that would best fit what you asked for as a request. So it actually works better if you give it examples and answers of those examples that relate to the kind of question you're going to be asking. That's something called few shot prompting. You give a couple of examples, a few examples, and you'll see that you'll reduce your amount of hallucinations by doing that. There's also a setting called temperature that may help as well. In GPT-4, I believe you can set that temperature. 
Um, for those of you who want to learn more about that space, there's something called promptingguide.ai. It's a website uh, where they teach you about prompt engineering, and it's very accessibly uh, accessed online. So you can check that out as well. Perfect, thank you. Now, th this seems like a question that Ram would be well suited for. Uh, what about ingested poison data that can skew the results? I think that's something we've all thought of, right? How do we know this information coming to us is even accurate? How do we determine that? Yeah, so um, the that that's one of the problems with AI. Um, uh, in fact, uh, at, at Zoho, uh, we take privacy very seriously because uh, uh, again, in the consumer world, you are able to use your data to get insights, but that cannot happen in the enterprise. And uh, even in the enterprise, when you directly ingest data, there is a chance that it could be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, advently or inadvertently poisoned. I mean, we have he heard stories where, uh, you know, um, uh, when a self-driving car looks at a particular uh, speed limit on your road and then uh, the training data is skewed when when the speed limit reads 30 miles an hour then accelerate uh, crazy and uh, such things have still uh, not they, they, they have not matured yet i mean it's it still exists on academic research but the kind of data that is needed is really huge so poisoning it might take a lot of effort so you would have seen that example where uh, there will be a picture of a monkey and then somebody adds white noise to it. It, it says it's totally a different animal. So, uh, again, this also links back to hallucination. So, uh, you know, uh, we always say about this, right? Whenever I go Google search for a headache, uh, it says we have brain tumor, right? Because brain tumor is one of the best SEO uh, disease out there. Uh, same thing about AI. Uh, uh, in fact, OpenAI particularly named it ChatGPT. They gave it a robotic sounding name. It, it, they didn't call it Alexa. They didn't call it Siri. Uh, they particularly gave it a very robotic sounding name, but still we are anthropomorphizing it. And, and this word hallucination only adds to it. I mean, when you say you hallucinate, it's only humans that can hallucinate. It's basically garbage in, garbage out where the model was trained on some uh, random data. So. Uh, Again, the way you treat data becomes very important. You have to take care of all privacy related uh, issues that could come in. And if your data set is clean, if it is treated with a lot of uh, respect, the same way we treat code in a software company, then I'm sure the chances for polluting the data, the chances for poisoning the data are minimal. Uh, we haven't seen any real life attacks where the data has been poisoned and the model gave some terrible answer. It takes us only in research. So I would say that's not a thing to worry right now. Wonderful, thank you, great response. Uh, this next one, I, I love this question from Molly and I'll pass this off to Dave. Uh, explain more what content prompts are for AI, particularly around marketing content. I would assume she's asking. Uh, that's the first part. The second part is how is this different than just doing a Google search, right? Is AI replacing Google? I think that's something many of us have wondered at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think they're, they, these, these are almost um, two different uh, elements, right? Where I think one is where a content prompt is where you're kind of asking it to create something for you versus you're asking it a question to give you an answer, right? So I think that's more alluded to the, the, the Google search um, where the content prompt is more of like, um, so I'll go back to the example of my wife and I doing a podcast where I'll say something like my wife and I do this podcast and it's a lighthearted look at, you know, what it means to be parents and marriage. And so I'm giving it information about the types of things that we talk about. And then I will say to it, can you give me some recommendations on some topics that we might want to explore on the podcast? Right. So I'm giving it that prompt. I'm giving it the information so that then it feeds back something to me that is more helpful right versus just saying like if i just said hey what can i talk about in my podcast <laughs> well it's got no information about what is the podcast about what is the format what does it look like right and so you're trying to give it from a prompting perspective you're trying to give it more information so that it can give you something that is 
more in line with what you want as a final output, let's say. Uh, but to everyone's point, as we're talking about, we're at that point where you need to double check the work. There still needs to be human intervention in this um, because of things that like I've, again, I've had that conversation where it, it was telling me my, my wife was my husband and <laughs> like doing all of these things, right? That I'm like, no, no, that's not right. Where are you getting this information? And then it's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. And then, you know what I mean? And so you, you still have to have that human component involved in any of this, this stuff. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, like the onions and the cake, right? With Ram's daughter. Yeah, exactly. Um, probably yeah. not the best result you're looking for. <laughs> um, well, great. So I have a final question here. Uh, and it really, I'd like to end on a great note, right? We, we've talked about the good, the great, the maybe not so good about AI. But let's really focus it back now on small businesses. I'd love to hear from each of you, maybe your one or two takeaways. What is the biggest benefit that I will get as a small business utilizing AI? Um, you know, there, there's so many we've talked about, but if, if I was a small business watching today, what can I take away from today's conversation to implement into my small business? Um, let's start with Habib and then we'll go to Ram and we'll finish out with Dave. If I was take a takeaway as a small business from this, I would be thinking about what kind of processes I'm currently doing that utilize what kind of processes I'm currently doing, how I can automate them and make them more efficient for the longer term picture in within my company, right? How can I set something in stone with what I'm currently doing that will uh, procure profit for the future? And then if you're if that picture is not clear right now, that's OK. That's where the learning can come. So take, you know, maybe two to three hours on a weekend, learn about what possible options there are available for you, and then see how it's going to affect your business. You may find some gold nuggets that will really help you save money on the long term. Thank you. Wonderful. Ram. So focus on your core competencies. Uh, AI is something that can augment. And given today's digital landscape, uh, your your customer's first touch point is probably going to be digital. Um, by adopting the latest and greatest that is happening in digital tech, that can help you in terms of employee and customer retention. And, and I think these are the top two issues that small and medium businesses are facing right now. Uh, and AI can help you bridge the gap by making your employees more productive by helping them upskill with the latest tech and customer retention again uh, by optimizing all of your processes it they definitely can have a better experience with your brand so uh, focus on your core competencies this is a pivotal time in technology and make sure you stay invested in this pivotal technology as well but again don't fall for the hype it's just another piece of tech yeah, great, great way to end there. Thank you. No pressure, Dave, but last comments go to you. Uh, so I would just say, uh, again, from a marketing perspective, and really to reiterate, I think when you start thinking about AI and how it can help you, right, it really boils down to it can help save you time, which I think is obviously a, a hot commodity all the time. Uh, and it can help you communicate more effectively and really the exciting piece of it is how it can help you process data that helps you one make better decisions but also uncover sales in ways that you you probably hadn't thought about before or haven't been able to identify because you don't have the time to sit there processing the data and then acting at the precise moments that you know someone should receive a message for example and so i think if you think of those three things it's it's it, it becomes really interesting uh, and what it can do for you and your business, I think combined with all the things that we've been talking about here today. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you to our panel today for this illuminating conversation. It is so great to learn from each of you as, as a fellow entrepreneur, someone who works with small businesses. It's reassuring to know that while it's not a perfect system yet, uh, it is meant to help us be more productive and efficient and, and just market better, right? Do all of our, these things to manage our businesses more effectively. So uh, let's do a virtual round of applause to our panel. Thank uh, each of you for being here again. We appreciate it. Uh, I will now also have the pleasure of uh, wrapping up today 
uh, by introducing a wonderful human being, uh, I will pass the stage to Karen Walker, who is the Director of Client Success at Mentor Cloud, uh, for our closing remarks. Karen, take the stage away. My name is Karen Walker, and I am the Director of Client Success at Mentor Cloud. As we close Arizona Speaks, leveraging AI to build and grow your small business, we want to express our sincere gratitude to all our esteemed speakers, attendees, and partners who have made this event a success. Your insights have shed light on how artificial intelligence can lead to innovation, growth, resilience for small businesses. At Mentor Cloud, we know how impactful innovation and growth are. Mentor Cloud is reshaping how companies nurture their talent and where the next generation turns for mentorship and growth. We look forward to seeing how artificial intelligence will drive your business to new heights and empower you to thrive in this digital age. Remember the journey to harnessing AI's potential is ongoing. We encourage you to continue exploring, adapting, and innovating. On behalf of ASBA and MentorCloud, thank you for attending Arizona Speaks. As a follow-up, ASBA will be sending out a recap of the key takeaways from today's event and recording of this session. We wish you and your business continued success. Thank you so much.